it's Lisa. I'm here today with a 5x7 photo and some watercolor paper, several embellishments, and I want to do a page. This is going to be sort of a title page for the year 2022. This photo was made, I think my husband had a doctor's appointment and we were just kind of killing time in a garden uh, in the city where this appointment was. And you can't see from this photo, but there were flowers. Uh, there were some dahlias growing over here behind him, some yellow dahlias, because it was in the fall, so it was a little late uh, in the year. And I'd like to use those as part of the design. So I'll share with that in, in just a moment. I also have some different embellishments. I was given these wood grain embellishments, and I love uh, wood veneer, and um, I haven't uh, been able to find a good use for these, so I think one of these would, would look great as the title. I'm thinking about Me and You, um, and I, I picked that because of the size, but it would be Me and You 2022, so it even rhymes. Um, and I think that'll be uh, cute for the title for this page. Pages like this, I don't do them very often. I usually tell a story, but this one is just, as I say, a title page, and it's just a page to have some fun with, um, with the different elements. I have chipboard pieces that came from another collection, things that I thought might work well here. I have some ribbon. I have some um, metal embellishments, some uh, canvas ones. I'm not sure what all I'll use. Um, I'm going to get the background done first. This particular watercolor paper is Strathmore, and Strathmore is not 100% cotton watercolor paper. I have gotten to the point where I use almost exclusively 100% cotton because it makes such a difference in how well things paint. But I'm actually thinking about doing a, a pen and ink, and I had already bought this paper some time ago. I, I used to keep this for scrapbook pages, but I'd run out, so I ordered another um, pack of it. I couldn't buy it locally anymore. And I thought, you know, I should use it. The um, Strathmore papers, they used, I used to remember them working pretty well. So it has been quite some time since I used them. But I experimented on less than 100% cotton anyway for the, this background. I was playing with some dahlias. And I was using a dahlia from my garden as an example to uh, paint from. And I tried several different things. This is actually Arch's uh, paper, so I got some halfway decent quality here. But this one came out pretty good, but I really think that I'm going to add the ink to it. When you do that, you get more of a graphic kind of look, and I just think that that would look really good with the photo. And it's even the way the printing on my shirt is. It's, it makes it look like watercolor with the ink around it. So um, so I'm going to do that. I have, I've had such a struggle with my camera mount in this room that um, this is the third or fourth time I filmed this. And in one of those versions, I had gone ahead and marked where the photo is. So I have some marks on my paper, and I'm going to kind of lightly draw in where this photo is going to end up so that, and I can, these, the photo will cover these particular marks. But I just want to give an idea of where the, the photo is going to be so that when I put the flowers in, I have an idea of where to put them. I'm, I'm, I want the photo to lay over the flowers to some degree, but I don't want to cover up um, a lot of them by, by painting in the wrong place. So I'm ready to get started painting, and uh, my painting stuff is actually on the other end of the table. Um, I may move it over here, or I may move this camera again to try to make that work. So um, join me for a little painting and a little fun with some different embellishments. I'm going to start off by uh, doing some of these yellow circles for my flowers. I'm just putting down a coat of light yellow paint because I'll be leaving a little bit of gaps here and there, and otherwise it would be white in the background. And I, that's okay. That's one look. I just thought it would be nice to have uh, the yellow throughout. I'm going to put on the screen the dahlia that I was using as a guide when I was practicing these. I didn't really have it in front of me when I was painting them here on the paper, but it's kind of where I got the, the look for my particular dahlias. But while that yellow's drying, I'm doing some green leaves, and the leaves for dahlias have a little bit of a jagged edge to them. I'm using my Emma Lefebvre brushes. Love these brushes. They're available through Craftimo. The shipping is a bit slow, but the brushes are fantastic. And then I'm adding a little more depth of color. 
I'm probably going to put the lines over this with the marker so I'm not being super fussy with them, just getting the color down. Using the markers will define them more, especially the veins. And I end up putting some leaves down in the lower right hand corner of the page also. I do that kind of off camera. You'll see them later on the page. Again, adding a little more, more color and eventually I will add a little bit of veining with the watercolors. Now I have a filbert brush, which this is the only one I have, and it's just a little rounded tip brush and it's great for making the ends of these dahlias. You could use a round brush for this, but um, it was just, I just sort of patted it on the ends and there's, a com there's two issues here. One, I had a little too much paint on my brush, but the other is the paper. This is uh, not 100% cotton, it is a cheaper paper. It's available in 12 by 12 and that's why I wanted it for doing scrapbook pages. But I'm just going around the edges of my yellow circles to add the outside layer of the dahlias. And while that dries, I can do the very center of the dahlias, which are um, little yellow dots in a lighter color. And I let that dry and I, I did add the, the second layer. I went around with the same filbert brush uh, going around doing a second layer of the outside petals, the bigger petals. And then the middle of these and what I think makes them look interesting are these little uh, open circles. And this is where you can see kind of some of that light yellow in, in behind it. And that's done in a darker color. And that's what to me makes them look like dahlias. Little, the little small ball kind of dahlias. There are all kinds of dahlias. I'm growing more dahlias in my garden now because they grow later, they bloom much later into the summer. They start reasonably early, but then they bloom quite really into the fall. And so you can have them for cut flowers quite a long time. Now I wanted to do something for the back, uh, for the letters. And so I thought I would just uh, do some blue-green and then watercolor paint, add some different colors to it, and then I would cut out the 2022, the numbers, not the letters. So you're going to see that this was a bit of an adventure. I'm looking at different ways to do my lettering because I have a lot of thickers, but once those thickers have been exhausted, I'm probably not going to replace them. Thickers tend to stay in my stash a long time. And you know how it is, after you've used a pack a couple of times, you start losing all the E's and the A's, and you can't make anything out of them. And then what do you do with all the leftover ones? So after many, many years of using them, I'm looking at reducing the, uh, the thicker population. Now, I did have trouble with this because I marked with a pencil, and then it was hard to see my pencil lines. And the first version of it I did, I cut out the letters. Well, first of all, the last two I kind of messed up. I didn't leave myself enough room. Um, I, I didn't really have, I had plenty of painted area, but I used, I just started drawing right in the middle of it. So I didn't end up with enough painted area, but I still cut one of the twos out. And then I went around the outside of the edge with the black marker. And what I really should have done was done was drawn it in black and then cut it out. And that's what I did uh, the second go round, because you're going to see this first go round just doesn't look that great. And there I am trying to do the zero. I, I kind of figured out a little bit better what to do, but I had it just too dark uh, of lines and I just did not like this at all. So I experimented with some other paper and finally I went back, I painted more um, blue and then I marked them with a, a little thinner bit, thinner marker and then I went over it with a few darker lines, not as heavy as that one marker that I had. I made a whole bunch of twos. So if I screwed one of them up, I had plenty to use. 
and then I cut these out. I added, ended up adding even a few more lines to them later on. So I have everything then. I just have to decide whether to do the lines on the leaves and the flowers, and I pretty much decided to do that. So I'm going to uh, show you how I do those. I use the Micron pens. Uh, the reason I'm doing the Micron pens is because if I wanted to go back over these with more color, then they won't bleed. Um, Sharpies and these do not bleed, but some of the others do. So um, that's why I, I'm using these. I don't end up going over them with any more color, but I'm going to slow the video down so you can see this process a little bit better. I use lots of different sizes, some really thin ones and then some thicker ones to just outline the different petals, not all the way around, just kind of giving an impression of where the petals are and those little circle things uh, to make that one layer of opening of blooms that are opening on the dahlia and then just some little squiggly lines in the center for the center of the flower. And that's it. And you don't need a lot to give the impression of the, the dahlia and to give it kind of a graphic look. What works for me is to keep the... the um, drawing sketchier. So I'm not trying to connect the lines at the end of these petals. I'm just doing little little quick dashy lines. Um, it, it's a, almost foreign to me because I, if I were sitting down to draw, I would probably draw very continuous lines and I'm having to learn to be more relaxed about this. But that's what I think makes it work in terms of appearance. Because I've done some of these for cards. This is the first time I've done one on the scrapbook page. I'll do a little bit more of a flower here, getting a little larger in size with the uh, markers. So now I have all of that done. And you can see my camera is migrating. I've, I was still struggling with getting the camera uh, holder to stay where it needed to stay. Um, but I wanted to add some yellow, uh, just some uh, paint, just some little flecks of paint. It's the kind of thing we used to do with mist except I don't have mists anymore. I got rid of my mists and uh, I just, they were, you know, not spraying and I just didn't have room for them anymore. So I just use watercolors whenever I want to add that little bit of uh, droplets of, of color. And I am going to mat the photo, just a very narrow black mat to make it pop a little more. I do think the background needs a little bit more of something to give it a little more of a mixed media look. So I'm trying out a couple of stamps here and some different colors of Distress Ink. I end up with the Antique Linen. That's the one that looks the best because it's kind of goldish. And I had a, a stamp from Stamping Up that has all these love words on it, but that was a little too specific. I felt like I just needed something to, to add that visual texture in the back, not that you could actually read the words. So I used the Distress Oxide and a little bit of, and one of those uh, stamps, this, these were from Paper Tray Ink a long, long time ago. Putting a torn piece of paper down keeps it from going all the way across the page. It keeps a rough kind of edge to it. And then I'm picking out a few embellishments. Some of the ones we'd already identified there. And then some ribbons and a few things to uh, kind of finish out the page. And I glue most of this stuff on with Tombow adhesive. I needed to bring some yellow over to the right side of the page and some blue up to the top. I've added the embellishments to this page, adding some of the things that we had looked at before, a little bit of wood veneer to complement the title, and just a few rhinestones. So um, I really had a lot of fun making this page. It took quite a bit of time practicing the dahlias, which is something I kind of wanted to do anyway, and painting them, but I just, I think it's a fun page. It's very custom. Um, I think you'll see me doing more and more of this kind of thing. It may be a little more polished, especially with the lettering if I use my silhouette. Um, but I'm kind of moving away from purchased embellishments and purchased uh, scrapbooking supplies. I haven't bought anything other than some stamping up stuff in 
years, probably since the first of the pandemic. I've bought some stencils, I've bought some paints and, and that kind of thing. But in terms of buying purchased embellishments, uh, pattern paper, I just haven't been doing it because um, I haven't been doing a lot of scrapbooking. And uh, now I'm, I'm getting back into it and really enjoying it. But I'm finding that I have a lot of things to make stuff out of. And when I go and I look at the, the available pattern papers and kits and stuff, to me, it looks a lot like the same kind of stuff I was buying years ago. My favorite paper companies like Basic Gray went out of business and, or, well, they stopped making scrapbook supplies uh, and go out of business. But the, so I just, I don't have my favorites and I'm just looking at doing other things. So that's kind of where my scrapbooking is likely to be going in the next um, few months. But we'll see. I still have a lot of pattern paper. So th that probably won't disappear from the pages uh, quite yet. But let's take a look at some of the close-ups. This lettering was a bit of a challenge to get right, but uh, or to get the way I wanted it. And as I say, I'll probably do more with the silhouette in the future. So thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the page. And if you have any comments, please let me know.